Why is this house inside? This is Garnet Hill in Glasgow, and this is the Macintosh building at the Glasgow School of Art. Well, somewhere in there is what's left of Glasgow School of Art. It was designed by Charles Rennie Macintosh with construction starting in 1897. And it's an architectural marvel. Macintosh is one of Glasgow's most famous artists and the most famous architect and designer. I can remember coming here in 1995 as a very fresh faced 17 year old wandering around that building and being inspired. This is the place that finally convinced me to go off to university and study architecture and design and beer and girls. I didn't do very well with any of them, unlike Macintosh in this building. It's the best example of Macintosh's work, but it's currently a burnt out shell. In 2014, a fire ripped through the library. It was just about repaired at a cost of 35 million when in 2018 fire struck again and this time it took out all the interiors and destroyed the structural integrity of the building. It's currently being repaired or really rebuilt but it'll never be quite the same again. It won't be the original, it won't have the ghosts if you like. So here's the second best example of Macintosh's work. This is the Hill House in Helensborough. It was designed for the publisher Walter Blackie by the mustachioed one himself and completed in 1904. Glasgow was a fierce industrial hub in those days. It was all about the engineering, ships, big stuff. There was money here. And Walter Blackie had bagged himself a decent share of it. It was known as the second city of the empire, which kind of makes it sound like a death star. But it was actually a grubby, smoggy death sentence. It was overcrowded and seriously polluted. If you're a publishing tycoon and you live in a biohazard, there's really only one thing to do. Hatch an escape plan. Helensborough was the place to be. There was a railway station here from 1858. And even now it has fast rail links to Glasgow. I once wound up here by accident after getting distracted by the book I was reading and missing my stop. It's by the Scottish seaside where, yeah okay, it does always rain. But back then it was a healthy escape from Slummageddon. And if you wanted to build a house, there was no one quite as cutting edge as the Macintosh family. Their work has kind of become part of the look of the city. Charles Rennie Macintosh was part of a loose collective along with his wife Margaret and his in-laws known as the Four, which makes them sound like they were in a spy movie, but they were artists and designers who were fully in possession of the mood of the time. Nice trick if you can do it. Macintosh was at the forefront of the Art Nouveau movement using natural forms to create designs that would appeal to the human eye. But there's definite elements of the Scottish baronial in there. This is essentially Walter Blackie's boot castle. Along with Margaret, an interior designer, Macintosh devised everything in here, which kind of appeals to the control freak in me. Though he did credit Margaret as the brains of the operation, saying he was the talent but she was the genius. Macintosh actually moved in with the Blackies to get to know them, work out how they lived and how he could build the best house possible for them. The house didn't have the easiest birth. The clients were horrified by the initial design and Macintosh had to dull it down a bit. As a parting gift, he apparently had all the interior doors in the house painted in the brightest colours he could find. Unfortunately, there's a bit of a problem here too. The render that gives it that Game of Thrones look is a bit useless. Someone actually said it has all the water resistance of a soluble aspirin, meaning that the whole place is getting a bit leaky. 
next to the sea in Scotland. The solution? Build a tent over the top. The tent's made of steel chainmail, which seems fitting for a castle. Bit extreme? Well, it saves the house, and it does mean you can do this. Welcome to Scotland Unplugged, in the world's biggest doll's house. Yep, my wife was right. I'm still petrified of heights.